Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Embrace the Chase. Jordan Connect here, and this is episode 41. It is blowing my mind how fast time is flying by, but I'm very excited because today for episode 41, we have Prosper Taruvinga. I believe I said that right. Um, super pumped up because he is a renowned public speaker, as well as the founder of Live Long Digital, uh, which is an incredible uh, kind of a marketing company based out of Australia. Uh, so you guys are definitely in for a treat tonight. Sir, is there anything you'd like to add to that? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for letting me join um, your 100, 100 um, video race. I mean, we, we're only halfway there, but um, this is a good place to be. Thank you so much, my man. Thank you. Of course, of course. Um, obviously, a lot of people know who you are that are that are viewers of mine, but some of them don't. So if you could do us a favor and kind of just start us from the beginning, what led you in life to become a public speaker and start your company? Absolutely. Well, thank you so much again uh, for this platform. Um, to be to be very honest and to be very blunt, I actually believe that every person that's running an online business should be profitable and they should enjoy whatever it is that they're actually doing. And I actually believe that those that are running that business should be able to create for and relate to those they're gonna be demanding money off of. So I was born in Zimbabwe, in case you only just noticed, and I moved to Australia six years ago. Now, you know, there was a big situation in Zimbabwe. Um, things were not working, especially on the financial uh, side. And, um, you know, that situation just led me to want more and actually, um, you know, look for greener pastures. I'll give you a specific example there, Jordan. Um, we've had, oh, well, up until two months ago, we've had the one president for the last 34 years. And um, what that means is the culture became stale. There was no uh, room to wiggle around. You couldn't move up the ladder, even if you were going to be working, um, you know, anywhere else. So, we all just got stuck and stagnant. Now, can you look? I've only been here six years and look at what I've created, but I was in Zimbabwe for the past 28 years and I had nothing. But I moved over to Australia, which was good. Um, we, you know, I didn't know the situation um, and how credit actually worked around here. So I wrecked a big uh, debt on my phone bill. And then I really needed to figure out how to get that paid because I had almost, um, I, I got evicted from the place that I was uh, staying at. And I really started looking for ways to get by. So one of the second jobs that I uh, partook, which was working in a restaurant, um, it um, opened up an opportunity for me to start doing their Facebook uh, marketing, which they were not doing, um, you know, for, for some weird reason. It wasn't really popular around that time. So, yeah, I was given that opportunity to try out my hand in creating a Facebook profile. And people started liking and sharing and reviewing that page such that my boss got so excited and actually gave me a job to become the social media manager. Now, that was unheard of to actually be at that time, uh, get paid um, you know, to to be on Facebook. So yeah, I kept learning and learning and learning. And I really started looking for different ways to make sure that I kept that job. And um, yeah, up until I discovered um, a process that I now teach my uh, clients, students, and I speak about um, internationally and also, you know, locally. It's a simple four-step system that is designed um, to help coaches, consultants, and service uh, professionals to uh, package, brand, and market their services so they have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So now I'm sitting here, um, I own a digital marketing company, and I am really trying to build it into a $100 million business, and we're going to be doing that in four stages. So pretty much that's where we're at, brother. I love it. So when you say the four stages of growing into 100 million, what do you mean specifically? All right. So four stages is basically what I'm doing right now, the consulting and the digital marketing, which has already created its its own six figure digital um, you know, services. And then the second stage is what we're starting off in 2018 as a software as a service where smaller businesses can now start advertising um, that cannot afford, you know, um, you know, those big uh, hectic agency fees. 
uh, cause one of my list products is like $750 per month and you have to be subscribed to me for six months. So naturally a, a smaller business cannot afford, uh, to, you know, put out that sort of hefty fee. But if we combine all the marketing and do it all for them so that they can just tap into the leads that we're bringing into them for a minimum fee of 150, um, depending on what level they are there. So it actually then creates value add, uh, so that by the time they're ready and big enough, they can at least scrap on to the minimum like that we have so that's you and then stage number three is basically going to be um reinvesting into those businesses that would have helped and buying them off of because obviously some people really have good ideas but 95 percent of businesses fail because of either cash flow no funding no marketing or they cannot really look after themselves so we will be picking up on those next businesses that will be um working on that's uh, stage number three and that also includes um um property investment which we've already started that is pegged to be creating plus or minus half a million in investment coming in through um every single year and then number four is how a lot of big people make money is actually through philanthropy um i'm coming in from africa so there's a lot of investors there's a lot of uh minds that haven't been tapped into, we're just going to be going in there and giving them a platform for them to actually start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. So I've got my, the rest of my life to create that and 100 million, just like you are going towards 100 videos. It's just only starting. Prosper, that's awesome. That's incredible. So then question for you, um, do you have specific niches for your clients? Like, do you only do speakers or do you just do local businesses? What exactly do you do? I'll tell you something. When we're where we're going um, is going to be a niche-free environment because um, what a niche really is is a collective of people that have a certain worldview, right? But worldviews are totally changing, right? We now live in a world where your neighbor is a cannabis smoker, all right, and um, they use it for recreational purposes. Um, but that doesn't make them a bad person, does it? Just because their values are not aligned to what I think, they are still a consumer of certain other products that you can sell to them. So we are now going for worldview. What do the people actually subscribe to as um, a, the way of living their life? Those are the people we're now going for because the niche was the way that businesses were talking to people, um, you know, one to many. Now the customer is in control as to they they focus on demand. They, um, you know, they control when they want the products, how they want it, because information is now available. So you can't influence somebody that does not respect you. You might have a niche of a 26 to 36 year old females, but I'll give you a specific example. A 26 year old female could be a university student and a 36 year old female could be a mother of three. All right. So those people are consuming information at different times for different reasons. So it's no longer a niche. You know why? Because they've got access to all that information. Now they've got a different worldview. Maybe they like environmental stuff. Maybe they like um, electric cars or maybe they like, um, you know, um, you, 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 you get where I'm going with this. All right. So we we are working with people that subscribe to a worldview where they want a business that's profitable and they actually enjoy working in that business. So it's almost like you're creating your own category. Am I getting that right? Absolutely. This is a blue ocean strategy um, in which not a lot of people, because there's a lot of people that 15 to 25 year old age mark, but that 15 to 25 year old guy has got a different mind of his own. He's going somewhere else on his own and he's, he's working on different uh, projects and he's got different ideas of where he wants to be, do and have, uh, you know, at the end of the day. So you want to make sure that you are found and you are there where your customers are searching. That's awesome. I love that. So then to go back on your uh, software as a service, um, that you're getting ready to launch in 2018. So ClickFunnels obviously did $100 million and I believe it was 18 months. So the question I want to come back to you, ClickFunnels is set up so that the user uses the software and builds things themselves, but then they also sell other products. Is that kind of what you're leaning towards? Or are you going to be more of a white label agency that people pay you to do services for them? All right. So it is more like that. We've got two different users, the end, end user, the person who just consumes um, the stuff that is being sold. So let's say you're selling 
uh, pens, all right? You become a customer of mine by putting yourself on that platform. You can sell to the everyday person who is the end end user. So people are jumping onto my platform so that they can have access to a whole wide range of people that we're bringing through our marketing uh, strategies. Cause we, my, my digital agency is one of the best with their SEO, with their Facebook ads marketing. So instead of us just marketing to, um, you know, for one different company, we're just bringing in a whole collective of an audience where, um, you know, people like yourself or other small business people can tap into that already defined audience I love it that's really cool so then side question for you what's some advice that you could give to people that are starting their own agencies um, or if it doesn't necessarily have to be advice what are things that you see people doing incorrectly all the time well let me tell you something people buy from people they know like and trust uh, that happens everywhere else and I think Everybody else who's jumping onto this online space um, automatically assumes um, everybody is watching their stuff or everybody has attention on their products. You really got to be known. People got to trust you because at the end of every profile on Facebook, at the end of every uh, profile that visits your website, um, there's a person with blood flowing through their veins and they're not a hashtag and you know what I mean? If they don't know you and if they don't trust you, you are nowhere near their wallet or their credit card. So it, some some people just think you can put up a funnel, you can put up a couple of ads today and hope that somebody's just going to know that what this means, etc. You got to nurture them, bring them closer to you as much as possible, educate them on what to want, because if they knew what they wanted, they would have gotten it already. All right. And then the one thing is, we already have all that we want. We as people already have everything else. What we are purchasing is a story. All right. People are buying stories that us as business people are telling. So if you're not telling that story, nobody's going to know you. Nobody's going to like you and nobody's going to trust you. All right. So you want to make You still there, Prosper? I think I just lost you. Prosper, you still there? Can anybody else see me? If you can see me, please comment down below because I don't know if it's me. Prosper, you there, sir? So I'm still here. Let me. Looks like we got Prosper getting ready to come back in. Yeah. Can you see me now? What happened? Oh, there we go. I can see you. I have no idea what just happened. <laughs> Uh, right. Anyway, I mean, the show goes on. I, I don't think B Life could contain the energy that you, <laughs> you're producing from that end. It was like too much. <laughs> Let's so see what's going on. Hey, this is what Thank happens you. with live TV. No big deal. Um, Great stuff. Great stuff. So then we were talking about going to $100 million. We were talking about your software as a service. Um, oh, this is the follow up question that I had for you because you were making phenomenal points. Um, what advice would you give to somebody? when it comes to content, and here's really the question that I'm trying to get at. Ty Lopez has brought a lot of people into the digital space, but he usually does long form content. So two, three hour long pieces. But then there's people like um, Grant Cardone who does 30 minutes. There's people like um, Gary Vee who are specific to two minute long content. What's your thought process on content? Should we be doing all different types? Should we just focus on certain aspects? Um, just kind of take it from there. 
Absolutely. All right. I'll just have you look at this if you can see. Um, my fingers are there. Yes. No, no two fingers are the same height. All right. Unless maybe you got hurt or something like that. And no disrespect to those people that don't have fingers. So people consume content in different variations. It depends on what stage they are in their life. Maybe some people have so much time um, for them to consume that content. When was the last time you watched a movie, uh, Jordan? Uh, two days ago. All right. How long was that movie? It was two and a half hours long. It was the new Star Wars. Exactly. Right. You see, because you already bought that story of Star Wars, you already bought into the franchise. All right. So you wouldn't mind sitting in and watching that video for two and a half hours because you're already anticipating that that video is going to be good. Right. And what sold you into watching that video was a preview of 30 seconds, wasn't it? Yes. All right. So if you're putting out content there and if you're not lame and people actually dig your stuff, it can be as long as you want for depending on what your audience really looks like. The whole thing about an audience that has so much saturation of content these days. Well, if they are not going to sit around, um, you know, to watch the rest of the stuff, what makes you think they're going to sit around and pay you the checks that you're going to be asking off of them? Because maybe they're not your client in the first place. All right. So it's, it's just where you put your content pieces because there's a buyer's journey. First, you get people's attention. And second, then they, there's consideration. And then from then on, there's different other stages up until they purchase. So when you know what content piece is going at what part of your buyer's journey, because somebody needs to see your stuff, don't quote me on this, but at least six to eight times before they make a logical decision that, yes, I'm going to want to buy from this person. And people are coming to the internet to get information. All right. And if your brand is the one that's providing that information, then they get to, well, like I said before, know, like, and trust you. So figure out where is your content piece going at what stage your customer is at. So that gets you to really, really know the kind of person you're going out for. All right. And also going back to what I mentioned a little bit earlier on the world view. All right. If somebody is off your worldview, they can sit in for two and a half hours while watching you dishing out content and they're learning from them. As long as you're providing value, as long as you're inspiring them, as long as you're engaging them and educating them, people will pay you for the value that you bring into the marketplace and people will respond back to you with feedback to say, yes, I want more of that stuff, even if I have to sit through for days and days and days just so that I can get enough to be close to you and touch the hand, brother. I love it. That's really good advice. Appreciate it. Um, so I'm going to enter the next series of questions. And that's, uh, so you've already talked about the SaaS business being a focus in 2018. But are there any other projects or goals that you guys are also working on going into 2018? All right. So our values basically go around three different words. We're here to live. We're here to learn. We're here to contribute. All right. So in any of those three things, we're going to be figuring out where what worldview is our current customer looking at right now. So some people are learning. Some people are, are, are wanting to contribute and some people are trying to live. All right. It's not about the Lambos. It's not about the Ferraris. It's not about anything else. You we really want to figure out where are we of value in people's lives and is it in direct proportion to the, um, you know, our values, um, you know, that we're putting out there. So it's different stages in people's lives. So we then figure out, are we teaching? Are we living with the people or are we contributing? I love it. Appreciate it. So I'm going to ask you the last question I ask everybody that comes on this show, and that is, is there anything right now that you want people to know that's on your heart or on your mind? And this can either be about you personally or a specific cause. Okay, great stuff. I, I really want people to understand that if you're working on an online business, it really has to be profitable and you really got to enjoy working in it. And it has to be deep and meaningful work. All right, people are tired of one click wonders. Please don't go out there with tactics that are just designed to grab people by whatever Trump says and and think you can get away with it. You know what I mean? Um, the, the market has become so numb and people are now tired of one click wonders. So if you really want to succeed in this whole business, figure out what is it that you really, really like doing that people are willing and able to pay for 
and you can actually want it to exist in the market. Don't just dabble and jump onto any shiny object that comes every Friday and think you're an entrepreneur because yeah, the market, the market is not stupid. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. Prosper, thank you so much for coming on the show. Would love to have you on again sometime next year to see the progress of, of where you guys are. I know you're going to destroy and just absolutely impact millions of lives. Guys, for those of you watching live right now, I'm going to put the links in the comments down below uh, as well as in the description. And for those of you watching the replay, please, please, please reach out to Prosper. Go to his personal Facebook page. Go to his business page. Go to their website. The man you see right here is really who he is. Uh, we were chatting before we went live, uh, and he's absolutely incredible. Prosper, thank you so much again for your time, and you all have a great night. Absolutely, Jordan. Thank you for inviting me, my man. Of course.